I'd like to take a minute to graphically explain what the Helium network looks like and what is the infrastructure that Helium gives you in order to build your Internet of Things applications. And hopefully that will give you a better understanding of what happens when a Helium atom connects to an element and then the element connects to the rest of the Internet and then to your application. So let's begin with the access point. This is the helium element. Just put it right in the middle. So helium element. And then wirelessly, your element connects with a bunch of atoms. So let's use red for them. And each one of those circles represents an atom. And you can have a lot of them. So each one is a helium atom. Now, each atom wirelessly communicates two ways, and I'll explain what that means with the element. That's all it does. As long as it's within range, then an atom will be able to communicate with the element. Once the element gets various data, sense, say sensor data sent by the atom, then it will relay it onto the helium network. I'll use black for that. So here's a little cloud, and this is the helium network. And the helium network is where the data eventually will aggregate for uh, from as many elements as you may have. Remember that if you are running a large IoT application, then you could potentially have more than one elements. I'll just put one more here, for example. Here's another element. And this element will have its own heliums, uh, atoms, helium atoms communicating with it. And that will also send its data to the same helium network somehow. This could be a, uh, a an Ethernet connection or it could be a cellular connection. It doesn't really matter. Now, once your data gets into the Helium network, then through the Helium dashboard, you can choose what to do with it. So, for example, you may decide to forward the data to an MQTT transport application, which is a very popular way to do such thing in Internet of Things application. Uh, but this is a topic that I'm not going to cover in this uh, set of lectures at all. Another thing that you can do is you can send your data to your own app. I'll just say to your app here. This is actually what I'm going to show you. In my case, I've got a very simple web app built using Ruby. A very simple to use uh, programming language. And that application is running on a host called Heroku, and it simply logs the data that my Helium Atom sends to my element. Or another thing that you can do is you can forward your data to other Internet of Things uh, systems or products that are running on the Internet. So, for example, you can choose to forward your data to a service such as Dweet.io, and then from there you can create your own dashboards. So lots of options. The, the thing that Helium Network does for you is to make this part of the infrastructure almost plug and play for you so that then you only have to worry about building the custom components, the custom uh, parts of the application that make your application unique and special and actually execute the functions that you want to execute. You can avoid having to worry about all the transport issues. The other thing that I want to mention before we move on here is the second direction of your data from your network to the helium element and then to your atoms. Suppose we all understand the left, so from right to left direction of data. You've got sensors on your Atoms. So let's say a DHT sensor here gets a bunch of data or readings from the sensor and then it will forward it towards the left. So eventually it ends up 
into your application for further processing. But left to right is what we call a, I suppose, a configuration or configuration over the air type of operation, which allows you to make a small change of, or on particular, of particular variables inside your Helium network. And then that change can be pushed towards the atoms and then reconfigure your application as it is in the field without you having to get your uh, your gadgets that are distributed in the field into your lab for reprogramming. So what could this configuration be? For example, in the example that I'm going to show you, I've got my helium atom connected to a couple of sensors and I want to get it to send readings from the sensors to my Ruby web application every say 10 seconds during testing. But at some point I may want to change that and make it every five minutes. So with this capability to push configuration changes to the atoms from the Helium network, what I can do is to make the change here on my Helium dashboard, and then that will automatically get pushed to my atom. The local variable that controls how often my uh, Arduino should report its sensor data to the Helium network will be updated automatically as part of this process. And that is just a super easy way to change the configuration of, uh, my, dist of my IoT distributed appliances uh, over the air without them having to be recalled into a lab and reprogrammed manually. And that's one of the core features of a really good um, IoT Internet of Things application. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more, check out my Arduino step-by-step -step getting started and Arduino step-by-step -step getting serious courses on the Tech Explorations School. There, I help you develop basic and more advanced Arduino skills, including how to write your own programs, how to use all sorts of sensors and actuators, and how to create your own gadgets. You may also be interested in my project courses, where you get deep into the development of wheeled robots, remote-controlled cars, and drones. Please use the coupon code in the description below this video to get a YouTube-exclusive discount to my courses. See you there.